Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering the IBM Machine Learning Launch Event. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We've been covering uh, all morning the IBM machine learning announcement. Well, essentially, uh, what IBM did is they brought machine learning to the Z platform, and my co-host and I, Stu Miniman, have been uh, talking to a number of guests, and we're going to do a quick wrap here. Um, you know, Stu, my, my take is when, when we first heard about this, and the world first heard about it, they were like, man, okay, that's, that's nice, that's interesting. Um, and it's, but, it, what, but what it underscores is IBM's relentless um, effort to continue to keep Z relevant. You know, we saw it with you know, the, the early Linux stuff, we, we're now seeing it with all the open source and Spark tooling. Um, you're seeing IBM make big positioning efforts to bring analytics and transactions together. And you know, the simple point is that a lot of the world's really important data runs on mainframes. You were just quoting some stats, which were pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, you, know, you, you look at, you know, one of the biggest challenges we know in IT is, you know, migrating, moving from one thing, and th 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 thing to another is really tough. Uh, I, I love the comment from, uh, you know, Barry Baker uh, was, uh, you know, well, if I need to change my platform, by the time I've moved it, you know, that whole digital transformation, we missed that window. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. there, we know how long yeah. that takes, you know, months, quarters, yeah. Um, I, I was actually watching Twitter, and it looks like Chris Mattern is here. Um, Chris was the architect of Venmo, which, you know, my, my younger sisters, you know, all, all the millennials yeah. that I know, everybody uses Venmo, right. he's here, and he was like, almost all the banks, airlines, and retailers still run on mainframes in 2017, and it's growing, who knew? And he said, <laughs> you know, you've got a guy here that's you know, developing really cool apps, uh, that, that was like, you know, finding this interesting, and that's an angle I've been looking at today, Dave, is how do you make it easy for developers to leverage these platforms that are always th uh, already there? Um, the developers aren't going to need to care whether it's you know a mainframe or a cloud or you know x86 underneath, uh, IBM is giving you the options. And as th you know, so a number of our guests said, they're not looking to solve all the problems here. It's that you know here's taking this really great new type of application, uh, you know, using machine learning and making it available uh, on that platform that so many of their customers already use. Right. So we heard the so it's a little bit of roadmap here. The the the, the ML for Z goes GA and Q1. And then we don't have specific time frames, but we're going to see uh, Power Platform pick this up. Uh, we heard from Jean-Francois uh, Pouget that they'll have an x86 version, and then obviously a cloud version. It's unclear, you know, what that hybrid cloud will look like. It's a little fuzzy right now, but that's something that we're we're watching, obviously, because a lot of the 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 model development and trainings and a live in the cloud, um, but the scoring is going to be done locally is, you know, how the data scientists like to think about these things. So, you know, again, Stu, more mainframe relevance, um, trying to, it's, we got another cycle coming soon for the mainframe, we're two years into the Z13. Um, and so, when IBM has mainframe cycles, it tends to, you know, give a little bump to earnings. Now, granted, smaller and smaller portion of the company's business is, is mainframe, but still mainframe drags a lot of other software with it. So it's, it rem remains a strategic component. So, you know, one of the questions we get a lot is what's IBM doing in, in so-called hardware? Now, of course, IBM say, well, it's all software, but we know it's still, they're still selling boxes, right? So all the hardware guys, EMC, Dell, IBM, HPE, et cetera. A lot of software content, but it's still a hardware business. So there's really two platforms there. There's the Z and there's the power. And those are both strategic to IBM. It sold its x86 business because it didn't see it as strategic. They just put Bob Picciano in, char in charge of the power business. Um, so, you know, there's obviously real commitments to those platforms. Um, will they make a dent, you know, in the market share numbers? Um, unclear. It looks like it's steady as she goes, not, you know, dramatic increase in share. Yeah, and, and Dave, I didn't hear anybody come in here and say, well, you know, th this this offering is going to say, well, you know, let me dump x86 and, you know, go by mainframe. Uh, <laughs> that's that's not the, the, the target that I heard here. Um, you know, I, I would have loved to hear a little bit more as to where this fits into kind of the broader, uh, you know, IoT strategy. Uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit on the intro, Dave. Um, there's a lot of reasons why data is going to stick at the edge. When we look at the numbers, um, 
there's for the, the, the huge growth of public cloud, the amount of data in public cloud uh, hasn't caught up to uh, kind of the equivalent of what it would be in, in data centers itself. What I mean by that is, you know, we usually spend, you know, say 30% on average uh, for, you know, the storage cost inside a data center. Uh, if we look at public cloud, it's more around 10%. Uh, so, you know, that we, we had at AWS reInvent, I talked to a number of uh, the ecosystem partners that started to see things like data lake starting to appear in the cloud. Uh, this solution isn't in the data lake family, but uh, you know, it's with the analytics and uh, you know everything that's happening with streaming and machine learning. Um, it's you know a, a large repositories of data and large trans you know huge transactions of data uh, that are happening in the mainframe and just uh, trying to squint through you know where all the data lives and you know uh, the, the new waves of technologies coming in. Um, we heard how this can tie into some of the you know mobile and streaming activities that aren't on the mainframe, uh, so that I can pull them into the uh, other decisions. But um, you know so some broader picture that I'm sure IBM will be able to give in the future. Well, I mean you would think you know normally you would expect. A, a, a platform that is, you know, however many decades old the mainframe is, and you know, after the whole mainframe downsizing trend, you would expect there would be a managed decline in that business. Meaning, I mean, you're seeing a lot of places now. We've talked about this with things like, you know, symmetrics, right? It's you minimize the R, you minimize and focus the R and D investments, and and you try to manage cost. You manage the decline in the business. IBM has almost sort of flipped that. They say, okay, we've got you know, DB2, we're going to continue to invest in, in that platform. Uh, we've got our major subsystems, we're going to enhance the platform with, with open source technologies, and we've got a big enough base that we can, we can continue to, to, to mine uh, perpetually. Okay, great. The more interesting thing to me about this announcement is it, is it underscores how IBM is leveraging its analytics platform. So we saw the announcement of the, the Watson data platform in last September which was a sort of this end-to-end -end data pipeline, uh, uh, collaboration between different persona engine, uh, which is quite unique in the, in the marketplace, a lot of differentiation there. Still, some services, I've talked to uh, last week at Spark Summit, I talked to some of the, the users and some of the partners of the Watson data platform, and they said it's great, you know, we, we love it, it's, the, it's probably the most robust in the marketplace, but it's still, a heavy lift. It still requires, you know, a fair amount of services, and IBM still, you know, pushing those services. And so, you know, IBM still is a large portion of the company, still a services company. So, not surprising there. But I, as I've said many, many times, the challenge that IBM has is to really drive that software business, simplify the the deployment and management of that software for its customers, which is something that it's, I think, working hard on doing. And then the other thing is you're seeing IBM leverage. Those those platforms, those analytic platforms, into different, you know, hardware, you know, segments, whether it's or hardware slash cloud segments, whether it's Blue Mix, Z, Power. So pushing it out through the organization and developing those. The, IBM still has a stack, like Oracle has a stack. So wherever it can push its own stack, it's going to do that because the margins are better. You know, at the same time, I think it understands very well. It's got to have open source choice. Yeah, absolutely, and that's something we heard loud and clear here, Dave, which is what we expect from IBM. Uh, choice of language, choice of framework. Uh, when I hear the public cloud guys, it's like, oh, well, here's kind of the main focus we have, and maybe we'll have a little bit of choice there. Um, absolutely, likes of Google and Amazon are working with open source, uh, but at least first blush, when I look at things, uh, it looks like once IBM fleshes this out, and as we said, uh, you know, it's, it's the uh, spark to start and others that they're adding on, but um, IBM could have a broader offering uh, than I'm going to than I expect to see uh, from some of the public cloud guys. We'll see. As, as you know, Dave, we've got uh, Google's got their cloud event in a couple of weeks in San Francisco. Uh, we'll be covering that, and of course, Amazon. Uh, you know, you expect their regular cadence of announcements that they'll make. So, uh, you know, it definitely a, a, a new front in the cloud wars, uh, as it were, um, for machine learning. Excellent. All right, Stu, we got to we got to wrap because we're broadcasting the uh, the live stream. We got to go set up for that. Uh, thanks, really appreciate you coming down here, co-hosting with, with me, good, good event. Always happy to come down to the Big Apple. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. So check out, obviously, siliconangle.com. You'll get all the news from, from this event and around the world. Uh, check out siliconangle.tv for the, this and other CUBE activities. 
uh, where we're going to be next. We've got a big spring coming up, end of winter, a big spring coming in this season. Um, and check out wikibon.com for all the research. Thanks, guys. Good job today. Uh, that's a wrap. We'll see you next time. This is theCUBE. We're out.